All right, I'm back and OBS was complaining that um, the encoder was uh, overloaded and it's still complaining about that. And I have a M2 laptop, so that's curious. Um, I've actually been struggling with um, Firefox slugging and I've, the whole laptop seemed slow, but I thought it was a Firefox problem. So who knows? Um, damn it. All right, if anybody in chat can tell me if the video is still laggy. Because from here I see 30 frames per second with a decent bitrate, but I suspect that's not what you're seeing. Okay. Um. To the point that it's unwatchable or something to fix for the next time? What do you think? Basically, if you can see code scrolling and windows switching, I think it's going to be good enough for, for streaming, in particular, if you can hear the, um, uh, the audio. Okay, yeah, if the camera is bad, eh, um, we'll live with it. Um, I'm not the main uh, attraction of the of the day. Uh, okay, so Kyber. Uh, recent Kyber is this uh, key exchange method uh, that uh, that's post quantum, which means that it doesn't have all the nasty symmetries that make it easy for potential quantum computers that don't exist yet. Uh, to to break it faster than uh, than we know um, faster than uh, classical computers ca uh, ca uh, can break. That's a problem for the curves. That's a problem for anything that's uh, factorization based. But uh, stuff like this, which is based on um, lattices with errors, are not uh, subject to the same problems. So. Uh, so we make cryptography out of them, and that cryptography will not break uh, because of um, because of quantum computers. Great. Um, the um, it it was um, selected by uh, NIST to be the um, to be the one that they're standardizing for use by the U.S. government, which kind of make will make it the. Uh, default for everybody, but was designed by an independent um, group of researchers. It was called Kyber, which was an excellent name, and uh, now NIST has published the draft uh, specification, which has quite a few um, issues in it, actually. Um, and uh, like at least a couple typos that change stuff. We'll see, we'll see it. This line in particular is wrong. Anyway, um, but they published this uh, the spec, and the spec is, I've got to say, much more readable than every other spec um, I've read uh, of Kyber, which is part of why I'm implementing it now and not earlier. And on the other hand, it has a terrible name, ML Chem. I, come on, Kyber was such a better name. Um, and it also doesn't have the ring that AES and SHA-3 have, like ML Chem. Wait, will I really have to say that a lot? Apparently, yes. Anyway. Um, there's three parameter sets, and realistically, I think we'll all end up using 768, uh, because nobody thinks 768 is too weak for anything. Um, 512 is probably fine, but even the authors always said, if you have the space, go with, go with 768, and the difference is 
maybe 200 bytes uh, on the on the wire, which is not little. Like these things have these giant keys, which is a whole problem. But still, it is what it is. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm implementing uh, ML Chem 768 uh, directly. I'm not going for um, something. I'm not trying to make it um, uh, implement all three modes. I'm implementing only one so I can use constants and so that I can write much simpler code for things like encoding and decoding because I don't have to make it work with all the bit sizes. I have to just make it work with the bit size used by 768. Um, I wanted to stream the whole thing, but I didn't have Wi-Fi in the new house. Um, uh, so you're getting dropped into a half done code base. So we're going to spend the uh, first 10 minutes or so just looking at um, uh, at, at the code base. Um, huh. uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so um, now um, I'm going to quickly announce it um, on Mastodon. I quickly banned some spam from chat and uh, If there are any questions, this is a good time to ask them. If you look, see me looking down, I have a, an iPad with a second screen in front of me so I can see chat um, and do things like, indeed, Mastodon. So sluggish. Why is that M2 so slow? posting on blue sky too smaller audience but actually kind of extremely active i'm enjoying it everything is slow i don't know why Oh hey, bird in the ground. Hi, good to see some uh, some known faces, known well nicknames. Yes. Um, okay, so um, where did I left uh, leave off? So, um, Kyber turns out not to be that complex. There are uh, complicated math uh, words like the number theoretic transform and rings and polynomials but turns out to do an implementation you need to know approximately nothing of that um so the fundamental uh, type is this ring element here a ring element is nothing else than 256 um, coefficients. If you're curious, there are each coefficient of a polynomial. So it's like the first one is the coefficient of uh, 2 to the 0, I think, and the second one is 2 to the first, and uh, and then to the second, etc, etc. But turns out none of that matters if you're just trying to make an implementation and you're not trying to come up with your own optimization strategies which we are not right now. We are trying to get to a correct implementation. Then we're going to try generating a bunch of test vectors because there are test vectors, but they're, as far as I can tell, just a lot of randomly generated test vectors for the same code paths, which, hey, better 
a little better to have a thousand test vectors than one, but if they're all testing the same thing, they're not super useful. So I want to go and start generating a bunch of negative test vectors and test vectors that intentionally hit some of the complex stuff. And I want to make a um, uh, step-by-step test vector. So there are test vectors like this that give you some of the inputs, well, I mean, all of the inputs, uh, and then all of the outputs secret key, uh, ciphertext, shared secret. And then here's a new uh, test vector. There's a lot of them. Kind of unclear to me why so many. Um, anyway, uh, what, th what this is missing is the ability to debug. Because if you write an entire Kyber implementation and then this value comes out completely different, what did you get wrong? Who knows? So I'm generating these test vectors, which instead this is a single test vector where it gives the same inputs, but then it gives you the step-by-step -step values that you generate in the process and before and after certain transformations so that then you can do some print apps in your own implementation and see, ah, yes, this S was correct before I did the NTT on it and then it was wrong. I must have the NTT wrong. Uh, and then, you know, you uh, bisect it down to what's wrong and most of the times just knowing what where the wrong is is enough because you stare at it intensely enough and you go uh, but worst case you can also just compare the, the values cool um, so that's the goal of the day so for that we don't need to know anything else than the fact that a ring element is 256 field elements what's a field element field element is just a number modulo q which is this kind of small number, which is different from um, other Kirtalk implementations I'm used to, where the module is this large, large number that you have to split over multiple numbers and do a bunch of carries uh, and uh, and so on. Instead, here, there's um, the module is 3,329. It's a small 12-bit prime. Um, so that means it fits within a UIN 16, uh, and, that's, and that's what we use. So we have some arithmetic modulo that field, uh, which is fairly simple. Uh, a field element, as we said, is an integer modulo Q. It's a UIN 16, but it can only be up to 3,329. Then we have addition, which just adds them together and then does a reduce once. Reduce once just means if it went above Q, in constant time, bring it back. And we do that by subtracting Q and if it underflows, then the top bit will be set. So if it went below zero, then x shifted right by 15 will be one. So and so then we add back that bit times q. If it underflowed, we add back q. If it didn't underflow, we just leave it alone. So the value minus q is what we wanted. So this is um, our reduced ones. Subtraction is the same. We subtract two numbers, we add back q. And then we do the reduction because redu reduce once reduces a number that is less than two uh, Q. Um, so yes, uh, I don't remember if this was correct. I moved it around. So if X underflowed, then X is, so it used to be less than two Q. Then we subtract the Q. So it has to be less than Q. And at least if it went below, it went below by, minus q so yes if it, if a was zero then now x would be equal to 2 to the 16 minus q which is still more than 2 to the 15 so we know that the top bit is good moving on then there's the proper reduction the one we do when the value might be as big as um q times q which happens when we do multiplications so here we do a multiplication we do it in uint 32s and do and then we do that reduction to do that reduction we use barrett um reduction which is a trick where you pre-compute a couple values uh this multiplier and this shift and what you do is that um you multiply the value which since we're multiplying a value that was already 24 bits by a value that's 13 uh that goes above 32 so we have to do it in a un64 ask me why i know I absolutely had to uh, track this down. It was a bug. Um, and then we shift it uh, right by a certain number of bits. And the result we get is, um, I think, uh, the quotient. 
So basically, we just did the division. Uh, this, this result is how many times Q fits in A. So we do A minus the portion times Q. And the result um, can be wrong by at most one Q. Um, and so we do a field reduced ones. Uh, this just works. If you're curious, uh, Barrett, um, Barrett reduction uh, is... Uh, well documented and I don't think I can explain it better than all the resources on the internet uh, but basically you pre-calculate this value and then this is the reduction value and these are the values you are seeing on that page um, good then let's skip compression for a second um, in a ring there's addition uh, and addition just means you add each element to the corresponding one. You know, you go uh, for each element in the ring, you add in the field uh, the two coefficients, and that's and that's addition. We're skipping compress and the compress for a second. Uh, NTT. So NTT is this thing that looks super intimidating, but in practice is just a domain shift like the Montgomery one. So it's basically a different way to represent the same value that has some nice properties that allow us to do some things faster. Um, so there's a function to take um, a ring element and make an entity element, and there's a function to take an entity element and get a ring element. And these are one, uh, one the inverse of the other. Um, so we can go back and forth from this uh, entity domain to this non-entity domain. An entity element is a little more complex, is um, technically 128 polynomials, each of them with two coefficients. Well, remember that the ring element is a single polynomial with 256 coefficients, but it doesn't matter because to implement them, that just means there's 256 coefficients. So it's the same type. Some implementations literally use the same type. I think it's a bad idea. You probably want the type system to tell you, hey, you skipped an entity transform here. Um, so I have a separate um, type. It means that I have, I had to rewrite addition for uh, entity because it's the exact same one, but I guess I could use generics. I guess I could use generics. Huh. Ooh, now I'm curious. Um, let's try using generics. This this will go poorly because I don't actually know how to use generics, but it'll be fine. Um, we call it uh, polyad. We'll find a better name later. Wow, typing is laggy. Why? Um, is this how you do it? Wow, it's almost painful to use. So if I say replace ring add, uh, how do how do I call it? Uh, uh, probably add is fine, probably. I use it then. Nope. Oh, probably missing the little squiggly. That's helpful. Very helpful. Um, 
error from the compiler. Sweet. Okay, so we can use generics for this. Nice. Um, I think it was the only thing I had duplicated, but whatever. Um, yep, nice. Okay, so that's what you probably need to know. The next thing, then there's, oh, um, in the entity domain, you can do this multiplication, um, black magic, whatever, um, it works. It's the special thing of the entity. In the entity, you can take two entity elements, so these two uh, slices of 256 things, and you can mash them together like this with these constants here, which are, this is 17. This is a fancy constant for 17, and it's 17 to the two times reversing the bits of the index plus one. I have no idea why it works. It doesn't matter. I'm an implementer. I don't need to know. I'm curious. I'll probably figure it out one uh, one day because I'm curious, but, um, but you know, uh, for our implementation today, this is black magic. It works. It allows us to multiply two elements. And it's much faster than doing a multiplication in the actual ring, which is why we do the entity uh, in the first place. Um, how to go to the entity and back also black magic? I copied it from the uh, from the uh, from the spec. Uh, and then there's this couple functions that do sampling. So they take some input values, they hash them, and then they just read random elements uh, from the from the hash um, to make a random entity element here, and to make a run a not not so random actually sl small uh, ring element here. Uh, this one will only ever give out, I think, plus minus two, something like that. Uh, while the other one will give completely random elements. Great. Uh, the only other thing that's already written in this code is compression. So compression and decompression is intuitively very easy. Um, the idea is that for each coefficient, you take a value that's... Uh, for compression, you take the the whole uh, range of values, which is zero to three thousand three hundred twenty nine, whatever it is, and you just smash them together. So you map them to say zero to two hundred fifty six, or in this case, ring compression in code four uh, compresses it to zero to two to the fourth, which is uh, two times two four times two eight times two sixteen, and Closer values end up mapped in, into the same. So it, imagine just a bunch of values and then 16 buckets and you put them in there. It's actually kind of annoying the, uh, annoying to implement um, in constant time. Uh, but good news, it's already done for the directions we needed for this side. Uh, this, side. Um, this spec gives you a separate compress and encode functions, um, but it always uses compress when it's then going to encode to bytes and decompress when it's decoding from bytes. So basically it's a way to take a ring element and lose some bits as you put them into bytes in a smaller packed fashion and then kind of approximate the, uh, them back to the values they were when you decompress them. There's so gonna be some loss uh, but that's okay. Um, and it's okay because lattices and errors and equations that get sampled and stuff, black magic, doesn't matter. Uh, to us implementers, it means that the thing that matters is that we compress when we put into bytes and we decompress when we uh, decode from bytes. And in a sense, it's just a lossy byte encoding. Yes. So this one... Um, the codes from one bit, which is actually used to just map um, each bit of a, a message to zero or uh, the opposite of zero, so half Q, 
uh, which is 165, uh, 1665. Um, this one is encoding to 4 bits each, and this one is encoding to 10 bits each. Um, and I wrote them, hard-coded them, because um, as you can see, 4 is very convenient because you just go byte by byte um, and compress two values into it, while 10, you go 5 bytes by 5 bytes and you compress four values into it. Um, if I had to, to do the full um, fully supported thing, you can see how it works out in Kyber, and it's more complicated. I think I, I end up writing fewer lines by writing three separate ones, one for one, one for four, one for ten, which are the three you need, uh, then all the lines in here that have a bunch of shifting and bits left uh, and re early returns, which, I mean, boring SSL code is always fantastic, but still, uh, this is, I find this more readable. Um, as a strategy, uh, compress. I'm going to have to rewrite. Uh, I don't. I honestly uh, uh, lifted this from uh, boring SSL, and both for licensing reasons and because I want to just think it through. I'll I'll just rewrite it. Um, but yeah, that's it. So we um going a little higher up. Um, Kyber is two layers. There's a public key encryption. Uh, scheme, uh, which is this one, uh, which takes, there's a key generation, which I've already written and works, and there's encryption, which I haven't finished, um, and this encrypts um, with a encryption key that was generated here, uh, a message, and um, using some uh, some randomness. And this is not exposed to users. It's used in a higher level uh, key encapsulation uh, mechanism, which is very important. You should never use the the underlying PKE. Uh, it's just an implementation detail. There are some libraries that expose it. That's bad, 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 bad. Like the spec actually asks you to please not do that. All right, so here's the spec. Um, and I feel like I've talked the introduction for a solid uh, half hour. Uh, so if there's anybody still listening and still in, interested, it's probably a good time for questions. Um, also, I need to figure out where I left off. the compress so we're at line 20 of this algorithm we just did this and we got uh, all ga? no gamma gamma um, I do not know my uh, Greek letters uh, so next we need to do. The T over there is a transpose, which is the topic of this mess around the transposed or not transposed A, which they changed by mistake from the Kyber um, uh, spec. Uh, I'm going to write it once as written in the current draft, because I have test vectors that are written like that, the, the ones you saw earlier. Then once the test vectors match, I'm going to produce all the intermediate test vectors, and then I'm going to switch to the original Kyber one, look for test vectors to make sure that those are right, um, and commit that one, uh, and probably generate the test vectors and publish them for this uh, fixed version, because NIST already said on the mailing list that that was a typo, and that the final version will have will match the um, Kyber spec, not this um, uh, this modified version. Um, so, uh, here we need to do, we need to do a 
transposed matrix multiplication um this dot is for anybody who like me didn't do linear algebra um it's um a dot product so this and all our dot products i think are between uh, uh the hell is t t is the result of by the code so t is a ring um, they say that a ring is just a special matrix um, with a single column, I want to say. Um, no, with a single row. Uh, let's go, let's go back and look. Um, this always trips me up. Uh, Oh yeah, uh, I'll post the, the link for matrix multiplication. So matrix multiplication, the thing that always helps me is to remember that what you get out is something that has as many, um, oh boy, as many columns as the second value has columns and as many rows as the first um um as the first value has rows here this one is the thing that i um that always helps me with uh with the intuition the the result has rows for um uh as number of rows comes from the first value number of columns comes from the second value uh, and then the mechanism is that you go row by row, um, multiply with um, with each. You take a row, you take a column, you multiply the corresponding values, uh, and then you um, add together all the results, and that becomes the the entry in the in the in the result. This will either be extremely confusing if you haven't done a bunch of linear algebra or extremely obvious if you've done a lot of uh, linear algebra. Um, and I have not done a lot of linear algebra, so I I understand it, but I don't have an immediate um, recollection for which, which one is which. So um, this snippet is what I always go back to look at. You see that here is going to be four times one, five times one, six times one, because the first column of the result is the first column of the left value times the value in the um, times the um, the values in the first column of the right um, added together. I can't explain it better than the visual aids. Um, I recommend looking at it. Now, what I wanted to go back and find was, I think they consider a ring a special matrix with only one row. Um, I really appreciate of this fact that in definitions, aside from the fact that they're all defined, which I appreciate, there's um, there's types, like they discuss the types of everything um, here, matters and vectors. Array whose entries the, uh, themselves are elements of Z256Q. This means our little type that has, that's a 256 array of field elements. ZQ is just um, integers modulo Q and 256, like that means there's 256 of them. Um, so, uh, when we see values that are bolded, uh, that's an array of arrays of 256. Um, and then small letters are vectors and big letters are matrices. Blah, 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 blah. 
here, unless an explicit transpose operation is performed, it is understood that vectors are column vectors. One can then view vectors as the special case of matrices with only one column. Okay, they are column vectors. So this is the standard, um, like when we have a vector, it's a single column matrix. Okay. Back to us, because that explains why there's a transpose here. So if you multiply two things that have one column, it won't work because multiplication to work um, needs to, um, uh, the number of columns of the second one needs to match the number of rows of the first one or vice versa. Anyway, you can um, multiply two, um, two vectors. But here it transposes the first one. So that means that since the normal representation is vertical, transposing it means you take each column and it becomes a row. Each column becomes a row. That's, that's all that transposes. So T transpose here means that we turn this one flat. So we transposed this one. So the final result should be a single value. Is it? Yeah, because the result is not bold, which means it's a single polynomial. Okay, so this is just a very fancy way. God, it's just a very fancy way to say you take the first value of the first, multiply it by the first value of the second, and then add it to the second times the second, third times third, and that's it. Ah! I hate when. Uh when things are written very fancily because, you know, math, but with nothing just telling you, hey, it, it, it's just... Um, so, um, uh, AML Weems, which by the way, hi, um, asks the transpose typo. So we not look at the transpose typo here. There is no typo in the line we're implementing now, which is line 21. The typo um, is that um, the original Kyber spec Uh, for, for specification CPAPKE keygen ank here. As you can see, it says that a transposed is this thing here. So the value ij is parsing soft ij. So these are just coordinates x and y. Um, but that's how you um, create the transpose, and then you use it like that directly here. Here, there's something else. Here it says you make A like that, which is A non-transposed, and then you transpose it when you use it. So basically here, they're not actually doing any transposition. They're saying you just generate the matrix and it's already transposed for you, magic, or I don't know. Instead of calling it AT, they could have called it foo. And just use foo untransposed here. Well, here we create A and then we use A transposed in the operation. And likewise, in the key generation, I think they do something similar. So here you can see that it generates A, but it doesn't generate A in the same way that generates A transposed, because that'd be kind of weird. I mean, I guess the same thing can have different meaning in two, uh, in two pseudocodes, but that would be confusing. And indeed, this spec is done. They're both correct to themselves. They just do two different things. Um, here, it generates it by transposing I and J. It's very subtle. It doesn't it really could use a comment. Basically here, look at here. Here it's generating the transposed by placing at ij, the, the hash of ij. While here it's 
creating the known transpose by placing at ij the value of ji. Okay? So this one is defining a i j as the hash of j, j, j i and then a transposed i j then must be i j because they're swapping the i and the j and then they're using it as is like the transpose is used as is nist instead in key generation generates a i j with i j not with j i so the next one is the transpose of the hybrid one. And then they use it as is. While here, they also generate A, I, J as I, J. So they are consistent with themselves. A is still the same. And then they use the transpose here, which is correct. Like the, uh, the important thing is that encryption uses the transpose of key generation. But the core difference is that while in NIST, AIJ is IJ, is the hash of IJ. In Kyber, AIJ is the hash of JI. And that's the, the typo. They, they swapped them by mistake. Um, they're both correct and they're both, um, they both work. It's just that they're one the opposite of the other. It is subtle. There's a 10, 15 post um, uh, thread on PQC forum uh, where people are tr uh, try to discuss this and keep saying one thing for the other and keep swapping words while trying to decide whether to use the same notation as the Kyber team here, which is kind of weird. Like here you have to understand that AT is a special name for the already transposed a and that's why you generated with ij so what they're trying to help you with here is that since you generate um a there's no reason to generate it as untransposed and then transpose it because that's extra memory work that's extra work extra memory accesses you can just generate it by swapping these two values compared to how they are in when you generate it straight and they're trying to decide how to how to show that anyway thankfully we don't care about that uh here we only care that this thing basically a transpose of a vector on the left times a vector on the right uh, which is a vector uh is this the right one wait this is uh not the right uh, times a uh, um non-transposed uh, column vector is just a very, very, very annoyingly fancy way of saying multiply them one by one and add them together. <sighs> so we do that. And we really appreciate the types, the fact that we can confirm that's the case because this is not bold. And if it's not bold, it's a single ring element. So, um, we apply NTT minus one uh, and we apply it uh, once to the result because multiplication and addition, we have it in the NTT domain. So we do um, well, we need to start with uh, VNTT um, and we started at zero, I think think because we need to do the entity the transform before we do the additions so we do bar the entity it's an entity element then for um i uh, range t uh do we have t we have t great um we do uh, uh uh, we do 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 um vntt equal poly add uh of vntt and uh ntt mol of uh ti and ri so we multiply them one by one and then we add all the results together 
and then b is going to be entity inverse that so we take it out of the entity domain that the entity minus one operation here to the minus one means inverse that's mm, mm, mathematical slash cryptographic uh, notation for it plus e2 plus gamma uh, it didn't like it we don't have entity inverse inverse entity okay uh, poly add of that and e2. There's probably some performance we're leaving on the table by not doing this all at once. I don't care. Like adding together all of the um, coefficients um, one by one. I whatever. It would probably be much faster to do multiplication and then like do it coefficient by coefficient instead of the whole, the whole addition and then another addition because it's faster for memory accesses. But you know what? The thing is, Kyber is extremely fast compared to, say, X25519. So when we're going to be done, we're going to benchmark this and check how fast this is compared to uh, X25519. And if it's like lower than 20% of uh, X25519, I'm going to call it quits. It's going to be enough. I'm not going to make it harder to read. Um, there's probably ways to use CMD. Uh, I think the reference implementation uses CMD because, you know, there was a whole winning the performance competition kind of angle to it um but again i don't care if it's if it's 20 percent of the speed of x25519 which i have to run anyway in parallel because we will not gonna use uh, kyber alone for a long time i'm not going to make it all so much more complex to um to implement, especially when it's something that we are not good at implementing yet because we don't know what the traps are yet. And we have 15 years of experience implementing elliptic curves like we implement them these days. Um, and we have zero years of experience implementing lattice stuff like this or one year. I want to be hyper conservative and at best I'll make X519 10, 20% faster to make space for Kyber, if I have to, uh, rather than make seem, make a much more complex and harder to spot bugs in implementation of Kyber. Um, gamma. All right, and we have B. Then we need to compress and byte encode with DU, and DU is 10. Uh, these are constants of the 768 version of Kyber. Um, and byte encode C2, and then we just concatenate them. So this actually reminds me that I left a comment where I said ring compress and encode should probably append. It should append. Because, you know, one thing is making it slow one thing is making it allocate a bunch of memory and make the garbage collector go wild and slow down the rest of the program so let's make it zero allocations if we can um i'll probably have to go into sha3 and make the virtualization work so there's actually going to be a fun performance optimization session on this which i think is going to be a separate stream because we're going to be lucky if we get to the end of the um, test vectors in a, in a day um, everything you see was a single Saturday, by the way. So, Kyber can be implemented in a weekend, uh, which I think is very good. Anyway, um, we are going to do an appending um, strategy. So, for that, we're going to use slice for append, which <laughs> is basically an inside joke of cryptography, which is just a thing that if you're implementing an append function, so one that returns uh, an appended byte slice but you probably are doing cryptography so you want just a thing to put your result in 
you use slice for a pen, which gives you the thing to return and the thing to put your stuff in. Uh, and if there's space, it will do that by just re-slicing, which is going to be super fast and not allocate. And otherwise, it will do the reallocation as needed. Slice for a pen. Um, I'm always happy when I get to use slice for a pen. <laughs> okay, so... So we need to change the docs. Um, And we're gonna have um, Bird in the Ground is asking if uh, Mu, Sigma, etc. are actual characters, and I copy paste them. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, people re uh, are regularly surprised to see how slowly I generate code sometimes. Because, for example, uh, yeah, here if I need that value, I'll just open this and do either this. That was not gamma. I've been calling it gamma the whole time. Wow. Uh, sigma? Sigma. Uh, not sigma. Jesus. Um, anyway, um, I either do, uh, do that or I just copy paste them from, from here. Uh, mew. Mew. Thank you. Um, Probably unsearchable, but I don't know. It works. Uh, I do either that or or copy paste them. Yeah, um, I do the same thing for these cute little um, um, superfixes. Um, I just open this and and use them from there. It's low. I don't care. I'm not. I write cryptography code. I can be as low as I want. It's never going to be what actually ball next me uh if i introduce a bug it's going to take two hours to find it so if i take 10 more minutes to write things more clearly it's definitely a win um where were we here pens 128 byte encoding offering m and 2b compressing positions per byte um uh to s um and we're gonna do a slice for a pen where out and b are a slice for a pen of b for this many bytes and then we just need to return out and that's the magic of slice for a pen and that was not b that was s um and same here a pen's uh, 320 byte encoding offering element to s and it's n divided by 4 times 5 and then we just need to return out Actually, we could even reuse S here. There we go, because it is the same thing. We're just returning a new value of it. Cool. Uh, back to us. So we need to make... Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, right, so that's nope, spotlight is a bad idea while live streaming. Uh, this value here is going to be in the table of parameter sets, I hope. Yeah, so this ciphertext is going to be 
1088 um, bytes of ciphertext. So we're going to make a constant for that. Um, Um, here we are actually doing it by hmm. yeah but that's a, a simpler formula so here we're gonna use the constant and e is going to be make by zero with the pre-allocated size of ciphertext size and then we're going to encode i want a back button uh we're going to encode first in order every element of u with the u uh, size the u is the 10 one so we're going to do or uh f range u c equal uh, compress what okay uh, c f and then we're going to do uh the v encoding of v it does not like the type wait use a slice of ring elements ah log and here we're not actually doing the append. And I think then we just return C and nil. Done. Chance this is right? Small. Um, but it could be. Uh, let's try it. Um, oh, this is one thing I'm very proud of. I was like, do I have the field multiplication right? How do I test it? And then I realized it's 12 bits, um, 2 to the 24 operations to test them all. And so I just tested them all. Um, and so the, for the tests here, we... Um, we use these these vectors here. Um, uh, JP Junior asking if I'm going to write tests. Yes. So um, first we're going to try to get it correct uh, using test vectors we already have, uh, and then we're going to write um, try to write better test vectors for the negative cases, which nobody seems to have written yet. So the test vectors for when you're supposed to reject values. Um, so public key, secret key, ciphertext here. Uh, we rename this expected um, ek expected. Um, and then we do um, CD expected. Um, and then CT reference uh, PKD encrypt uh, with DK and write the message uh, this is the message
and the randomness shit uh oh come on Ugh. really So the randomness is actually generated uh, by so Z is this randomness here. Then D is going to be this randomness here. Message is going to be this randomness here. R is this. Uh, this is why I want to generate the more complete test vectors because while you're developing, you really don't want to be doing this. Um, okay, it's not hard to generate. Uh, but G and H are very annoyingly. Um, separate um, separate hash functions because they instead of doing domain separation they decided to use every single function in the SHA3 family so you're using SHA128, SHA256, SHA3256 uh, and SHA3512 which mm, mm, I have opinions about uh, anyway um, we need to take the second half of hashing with G, the concatenation of M, and the hash of EK. Alright. Um, hash of EK. Um, okay, so it's the second half. G, H, G, M, H, A, K. Okay, we need to go back and find G. So G is SHA3512. So. so M512 of the concatenation we said of M uh, and um, H, so Shatri two fifty six. This is not going to work, but will help of EK. Uh, and it won't let us do this because that's okay. So, Uh, 512, 256, 32, right? Alright, that should So if that's not 32, it's going to error out here. And if this is not 32, actually that's allowed to be whatever length it wants because it's hashed into some other stuff. Um, it won't crash anything. Um, it, it would just be wrong, but that's just a matter of being wrong. Um,
<laughs> That's very wrong. <laughs> Is it even the right length? Then we'll figure out why it has all that emptiness, but let's start with the easy stuff. It's not even the right length. However, 2176. That's also not what we expected. Did I read the parameter set wrong? Oh, right, it's double it, of course. Uh, so 2176 divided by 2 is 1088. Okay, that's correct, actually. It, so 1088 is what it's supposed to be, It's but we're not even generating the right length of it. That's fun. Um, all right, let's figure it out. So, oh, for starters, that's supposed to be four, and that might be it for length. Still, still catastrophically wrong, but at least it's the right length. Nice, so why are there all these zeros? Um, two ways. One, we try to go by intuition and we try to find the mistake, which might not be that hard, or might be very hard actually. Or um, we go and do what we were saying about um, making the test vectors, uh, the step-by-step -step test vectors so that we can take this function step by step and see when do we go wrong. However, to do that, we'll have to first change the... Oh, also, I th think here I'm implementing... Well, we have that whole mess of Kyber versus MLChem. Um, Um, so here we're using ij and then using it untransposed. So we're implementing the NIST flavor, which is why the test vectors match, uh, which probably means that when we actually produce the test vectors from this Python implementation, which I'm just using to inject uh, prints all over the place. Um, it's going to come out wrong. Um, also, there's a Montgomery um, stuff in this Python one, which I don't get because the Montgomery stuff is to make it faster to do constant time reduction. But first, this is Python, and second, it doesn't do constant time reduction. So I suspect they wrote uh, the Montgomery stuff because it's a port of the official implementation which uses Montgomery. Um, I'm not using Montgomery because, again, I don't care about speed that much. Um, and because I'm trying to write it without basing it on the original implementation, and instead we're writing it from spec because it's important that the spec allows you to write it from scratch. Um, anyway, I suspect that if we print this, we'll find out that it actually doesn't produce what we expect. So let's uh, make it print pk. And I suspect we'll see it's not the one we have in our tests that are passing. Right, maybe we'll have it. Uh, 
So this I bet is not is not this exactly. Um, and I bet that if we switch key generation here to be ji, so we transpose that whole mess that we were saying. Instead, we get this value that starts with 98 and ends with 62 from our Go implementation as well. 98 and X ends with 62. Yes. Okay. So we know how they're different. Now let's try to make the Python one switch to our our versions. So let's port everything to uh, uh, both here and here. Um, but now we want to generate test vectors that match for now with the ones we we lifted. So let's try to get the Python transposed. Generate matrix from seed, which I bet is both here and here with a transpose through here. We just need to do the opposite. Boom. Um, AG6 asks why in the Go code I had um, a slice and it's because that was an array. Let me find it for you. Um, here, uh, sum 512, no, that was not, um, sum 256, you can see that it returns a 32-byte array. So this is a 32-byte array. Um, here we needed a slice. It's possible that we dot dot dot. Yeah, no. See, um, if I remove it, it says, "Hey, variable of type thirty-two byte. You're using it as a byte slice. It's not gonna work." So first we slice it, which means we make a, a slice, which is a different structure. A slice is a pointer, a length, and a capacity out of that underlying array. Um, it's useful to go into the runtime and see how a slice is represented, which is literally just a struct with a pointer a length int and a cap a capacity int. Um, so it makes that slice header out of that uh, out of that array. That's what it's for. Okay, so in theory, this is all we need to do to make the Python generate, please match, because if you don't, I don't want to debug the Python. Yes, yes. Oh. Oh. Okay, so um, now we add step-by-step -step values. Actually, now we check that the Python also generates the expected um, ciphertext, which I see no reason why it shouldn't. Uh, so k dot underscore cv. Pank, PK and coins. Uh, I I use um, Copilot when I'm writing Python because you generally don't remember Python that that well. But lol, um, yeah, sometimes it really just makes shit up. Um, and distracts me. Um, so this is the same problem we had earlier. So we go here and the message is this. Mm. 
and the um, value instead we go look at where it's generated, which is here. Wait, why is it hashing the message to? Oh, because that was a silly Kyber specific thing. So we take a note. Uh, this is a thing that they actually remove, and least actually removed, uh, which is correct to remove. Um, Kyber uh, is a note for future self. Not in round three, but interesting that uh, Copilot knows how many rounds of Kyber that there has been. Um, actually, ML can. Uh, yeah. So M is this. No, M hash self is K. And for now, we don't need K bar. Okay, this should work. Ah, oh, PK is not defined. It's AK. Um, and then we go back here and we inject. And we inject some prints, starting with this one. All right, is it right? Is it wrong? It is right. Okay. So we have the Python that's generating the right thing, and we've got the Go that's generating the wrong thing. Um, we now need to figure out at what point do we start generating the wrong thing? Um, do we generate the wrong T, maybe? Um, uh, that's just a byte decoding. That would be very surprising. Um, but hey, let's just go into the Python, make it print the hell out of everything, and then we'll, we'll think about it. Okay, so raw. This is the part where I go copy paste raw. <laughs> and then TT, which is. The hell is TT? Why is it already NTT'd? Oh, maybe because T is actually, a, yeah, because it's encoded as NTT. Like the public key is encoded as NTT, which is why the NTT is part of the spec. Um, oh, um, little this say, says video is basically stuck. Uh, but here's audio find. Um, heh, uh, Yep, I see it stuck as well. I'm going to kick it.
Okay, we might be back. I hope I wasn't gone for that long. Yeah, it looks mostly back to me. Okay, then we're back. Sweet. Um, I just kicked it. Uh, I really need to bring Ethernet here. I wonder where the closest Ethernet I have. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be much better set up the, the next stream we do. But thanks for letting me know in chat. Uh, I would not have uh, noticed at all. Um, okay, so... Um, here we do the coding and then we get t then the there's the encoding of the message let's go match it to the letters that are used here so there's t there's hmm. ah yes yes we already printed that it's just in the other order then it generates a um the decompressing of the message is that so uh, and this is a trans a transposed ah it learned from from above but that's not what we meant to do maybe the next line it will give us yeah um this is kind of fun to do with um what's it called uh, with um copilot so we generate r and e1 uh yeah but first we need to do um what's it called the reduce coefficients because Python, the Python implementation has this terrifying thing where it doesn't actually reduce the coefficients between one thing and the other. Um, okay, so that's R. No, wait, E1 does not get converted to an entity, I think. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Um, okay. Mm. The input bytes. Uh, we're not printing, but we probably will want to print them later when we figure out but first let's figure out what the wrong thing is so um, we need to do so we've got e2 we're gonna want u which is already plus E1. Wait, what? Oh, yes, it is. Actually, let's put reduce coefficients in, uh, in P. Um, is the stream still working well? Anybody can wave hello in chat. Mm. 
that should allow us to remove a bunch of these. Well, not these ones because I'm not sure. Yeah, no, these ones because we're printing that, that, this, and this we can remove. All of these. Cool. Thank you. Okay, so we print you and then V why it's zero it's zero. Oh, because it's taking the enter it's using matrix multiplication. The thing we said before, it's actually a very simple multiply each value by each value, but it's treating it as a matrix and then taking the, the first, which truly no need. Um and then adding E2 and M poly. So this is the point where we print it. And then it's doing the two encodings. Okay. Um I think this is printing enough stuff. And now we go in our implementation and figure out what we're getting wrong. One value at a time. And if you feel like this is a bunch of printf uh, debugging, yes, yes, it is. It is exactly that. Do we not have ring byte encode? We only encode entities. That's kind of surprising, but okay. Yeah, apparently yes. Okay. Um, it's an append API, so if we pass in nil, it will just encode it. Uh, and then if we print a new line, and that should show us t. If t is different, it's gonna be very simple, but it's never gonna be just that. Yeah, T is right. So we're going to clear the buffer and then produce only this so that if it appears, then it's correct. And P, uh, well, that, well, I'm not going to try saying the names of values because I'm just going to make a fool of myself. Um, all right, let's try the A transposed. Uh, Actually, let's do that last, uh, which is by Murphy's Law is going to make it the thing that actually needed checking. But anyway, uh, let's try R. Entity of R is correct. Um, right. Uh, if we want to byte encode the ring element, which is E1, we're going to have to get a ring. Um, 
ring byte encode and ring byte the code which i guess we can do uh, by making it uh, the uh, score of uh, n field error. Okay, let's use the ID to rename it first. Okay. Which should allow us to do why is it inferred? Cannot infer T. Huh. Why? T I is definitely an entity element. Okay. Weird. Uh uh, bird in the ground asking if i'll make the uh, vod public definitely i'll probably uh check it on youtube um have a good evening and i got completely lost where were we printing stuff here uh, okay so r we have it right now let's check if we have e1 right We have E1 right. Eh, I guess we just keep going like that. Um, let's print E2. We have it to write. <laughs> All right. Um, let's let do you. We have you right. Come on, we got so close of getting it the the first try. Damn it. Oh, now this one is not right. Aside from the fact that we're not printing it on the Python side, but it's definitely not right. So my ring decode and the compress one is broken. Uh, let's find where it's using it here. It's the decompression of the message. No, it's it's in there. It's supposed to be printed by the Python. It's just done much earlier. Here. Right. That's what the value is supposed to be. It's definitely not that. Yeah. And all of these repeating values are correct because they need to be either once or this fixed value, which is the flip side. So this one has a precisely one value like that. So I think we we found one of our bugs. Uh, it's definitely in ring the code and the compressed one, which is why these 
large test uh, transcripts are helpful. Okay, so it goes through each field element. Yeah, this this is not this is not right. No. Uh... So it takes a thirty-two byte slice, and it's trying to map it one bit each to the elements because 32 times 8 256 so i is going to be 0 to 256 so we need to select the ith bit of b i divided by 8 will give us the right byte but then if we shift right by i by just i we're going to almost always shift that all the way out because instead we need to shift out by the reminder <sighs> yep all right that's it let's see still failing but let's see but now the message is decoded right so we keep going because it's definitely still extremely wrong um, but hey we found one bug uh, where were we so we're here let's do v v has got to be wrong V is not wrong. Uh, so if V is right, and U is right, we have everything right, it's just the compression routines. Wow, I was really tired when I wrote the compression in the compression, but yeah, damn, I uh, got them both wrong. Uh, so, C1 and C2. Uh, let's break it up in the Python one. Not that it's particularly worth it since then you, we just print the concatenation, but hey, maybe one of them is right. C2, let's see if C2, at least C2 is right. What did I just do? Okay, C2 is wrong C2 as well. Jeez, I'm bad at this. Um, okay, uh, one at a time. So slice for append, uh, we prepare the bytes, then we go two by two. And the bytes divided by two because the target is 128 bytes while the source is i is 0 to 256, yb is uh, 0 to 128, that's right. Does u int 8 of compress of fi to four bits or with compress of uh, one of these needs to be shifted left <laughs> or right uh, little and then the most significant bits end up at the end so least significant needs to be this one and this one needs to be shifted by four. All right, that's a differently wrong value. Four, 
Was it the other one that needed to be shifted? All right, then I think it's time to show the inner works of compress. That's not how I want it printed. Um, right, because if we're encoding it, I don't want to encode it. So let's see what happens if I just print it like this. Right, that's, yeah, that's more like it. Right, so that's the compressed uh, video frozen again. All right, kicked it. Uh, let's see if it's uh, if it's better. we're back great i also started the inspector which maybe will help um yeah not great that's because i think they all end up counting as separate streams no um anyway the the vod will will be all together anyway this is the result of compress uh we are going to try printing these values from the go side too and i bet they're going to be wrong And we're going to try printing also the inputs. And we'll do the same thing on the Python side.
Okay, so compress is supposed to take us from these values to these values. Let's see if it does it. Hmm. The inspector is unhappy with the connection bit right now. Uh, am I stuck again? Three three one zero three three one zero seven oh seven one eight six two yes compressed to zero three nine zero five nine those are wrong uh, right Um, uh, let's see. Seems to have an around running the test. That's a good point. It might be a CPU thing. Also, I lost my second screen because I tried turning on Wi-Fi. Why is my CPU so, so slow? I don't get it. I used to stream on a M1. This is a M2 laptop. Uh, what, what? Oh boy. All right. Yeah, it seems to be a CPU problem, which regrettable. Anyway, we found our second bug. Um, compress 4 of 707 is compressing to 5. It's not 5. It's 3. The 9 is right, 8 is wrong, 14 is right, 5 again is wrong, 14 is wrong. Oh boy. So remember when I said compress, I just lifted from, from boring SSL, so I didn't quite make sure I understood it. Yeah, great. Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? Okay, um, all right, let's look at the boring crypto compress. Let's understand why it's different, and then we'll try to figure out. Did I change something in my CPU settings to make it maybe more secure and stupidly made it slower? I don't think I did. Hmm. All right, so uh, left shift by 
8 bits on a UN32 representation of X to get shifted. Then a 64 bit multiplication of shifted by the Barrett multiplier. Yeah, is our Barrett multiplier and their Barrett multiplier the same? 5039 and a Barrett shift of 24. Yep, those are the same. Uh, because basically compression does um, uh, what it does is it does the division just like Barrett and then looks at the reminder to decide um, is reminder 32 bits yeah to decide whether or not it's um um it needs to uh, round up or down so product shift right by barrett shift and reminder shifted minus quotient times q in 32 bits all of these are right so the thing i did differently is this because they have a natural function to do constant time less than word and instead i basically did my own by Basically, the idea was if you subtract a value, if it underflows, it will be, um, it will set the top level bit. And then if I use the top level bit, that's going to be the, um, um, the right value. So it's going to be one if it was less than. So what it is trying to do is if reminder is less, well, uh, lighting just got worse. That's because my light battery ran, ran out. Mm. Anyway, I don't have a long time left, but I would like to fix this so that we can have encryption right before we end the stream. Um, so what this is saying is add one if k half prime is less than oh i want to write tests for all of this uh. oh interesting also i think i might have figured out what makes the connection blip when my body is between the laptop and the and the wi-fi Um, anyway, we are saying, uh, when Q is less than a reminder, it adds one. That doesn't sound right. What the text here says is that when reminder is more than k half prime, uh, 
Oh, right. When so when k half prime is less than reminder, right, right. So if k half prime is less than reminder, then it adds one, and then if k prime plus k half prime is less than reminder, uh, then it adds one more. What did we implement? The opposite. We implemented the opposite. Still failing, but V is right now. Yes, C2 is right now. Now we've got to figure out why this um, C1 part has all that emptiness in it. Um, is the stream still running well? Uh, yeah, okay, the, the inspector is back to being happy. It was unhappy for a bit. Um, okay, great. So we have that, right? So we can drop these two because compress and encode four is right now. Uh, but clearly compress and encode 10 is not um, because we're encoding U, which I think we know is right because we just printed it all and we got the correct value, if I remember correctly. Yep. So we are encoding U, which is right, and we're getting this shit, which certainly isn't right. Um, in some cases, we're just printing a bunch of zeros. Why is that? So we're moving through the thing we're encoding, the ring element F, and we're moving four by four bytes. And we're compressing each of them. Why I divided by four here? That one doesn't look right. So the starting point, let's do it like this. And then B equal B five, and we move forward by five bytes. And let's see if that's all it takes. Test pass. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Fun. All right, and it's not even 6 p.m., uh, which is pretty much when I wanted to uh, hit the end of the stream. So, folks, I think this is it. Um, we have functioning key generation and encryption according to the NIST um, uh, the NIST type of flavor. Uh, we have a Python program that generates extremely detailed transcripts for the next implementer that will come after us. Um, and I'll publish those under uh, C2SP CCTV, which is like a collection of test vectors. And um, yeah, the, the goal 
good is good. Um, uh, I left behind a to-do to refactor this, but no, maybe now that it's right. Well, it was unreadable enough that it was wrong, so should probably refactor it to not be unreadable, you know, uh, so that it's apparent why, why it's right. But I think we're good. Um, that was encryption, uh, key generation and encryption. Uh, maybe next stream we'll do a decryption, or maybe I'll just throw that together myself because it's not that interesting. It's just the same stuff, exactly the same stuff. Um, and then maybe in the next stream I'll do the actual uh, ML chem because this was the KPKE, the underlying thing I was talking about, and then. The actual thing uses those to do encapsulation, and that one has input validation, and we have to make negative test vectors for those. Um, so yeah, cool. Um, well, that was fun. Um, if there's any questions, now's the time. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'll shut it down in a couple of minutes. The sun is gone. Guess it does that. <laughs> All right. I don't see any questions. So, oh, unrelated to Kyber. Have you heard uh, from anyone about the elliptic curve seed cracking? Uh, for context, um, uh, if you go on my newsletter, um, there's an issue about the um, NIST seed uh, bounty. So uh, myself and some other cryptographers put together a bounty for anybody who can crack basically a SHA-1 hash of a password, uh, of a passphrase that was actually used as a seed for generating the um, some parameters of the NIST curves. Long story short, we don't think it's a backdoor, but there are people who don't trust it. So it would be very nice if we could just um, clear all that by finding the seed that was used. I have not heard from anyone. Right. Like, I have not heard any good attempt. Uh, some people made very random guesses because it hit some uh, popular science uh, publications. But or like tried to decompose it into very small pieces and then found partial hash collisions. But that's not how it works. You can do that with any value if you make them small enough by brute force. Um, so not yet. Um, yeah, not yet. Um, uh, Mateus uh, uh, asks, are there plans to include Kyber in the Go standard library? Yes. Um, so, um, Google uh, also uh, sub is, is supporting this work with um, open source patch um, patch subsidy, and the um, the plan uh, is to get it into an internal package first, um, and start enabling um, start enabling the TLS hybrid key exchange, uh, maybe behind a Go experiment flag or something like that, um, and not expose it to users yet because there isn't even a standard yet, right? So it, it would just, as you see, there's the type of flavor and the non-type of flavor. And, uh, um, so we don't want to, and we have a um, forever backwards compatibility promise because we're the Go standard library. Um, so we're not going to expose it, but uh, since there is a spec for how to do it in TLS, which uses Kyber round three, which is different from this uh, in a few little details, um, the plan is to um, do the same thing I, need, I did for other internal uh, packages uh, like NISTC and BigMod um, and Edward 5519 There's going to be filippo.io slash mlcam768, and that will be a third-party module with not as strict of a backwards compatibility promise that you can use. And the same code will go through code review to become the internal package of the standard library. 
um, where it will stay internal and only exposed through TLS until the final NIST um, uh, until the final NIST spec comes out and we have decided what API to expose because this is a CAM and we don't have CAMs yet in the standard library so we'll want to think about what the right API is and we might it, that might take some time so the idea is we'll take it slow and get it right and experiment and not lock it in for a while in the standard library but for people who want to adopt it as soon as possible that are working on stuff that can tolerate the uncertainty because that's the only way to the deploy kyber right now because as i said there isn't even a final standard uh, they can use filipororio slash um, mlcam768 which doesn't exist yet but will exist which instead will have similarly unstable uh, api guarantees um so yes the uh, unstable standard is not the right thing for a very stable standard library, but it can live in an unstable um, external uh, package, external module, which would be a v0, so can still change the API. So yeah, that's uh, that's the plan. Uh, this code will be in Filippo.io, and then we'll go through code review and go into the standard library, and that'll bring back any changes we make in the standard library into the Filipo.io package, which uh, which is what I do for Edwards for 519, what I do for all of the other ones as well. Yep. Any other questions? Going once, twice, try. I will give it a second because I think the lag is a little higher than usual. I, should, I probably forgot to turn on some settings. Bit of packet loss. Um, is there a public test server that supports Kyber in TLS? I actually don't know, you know. Uh, sounds like the kind of stuff that um, uh, Cloudflare would stand up, but I haven't seen one. Uh, you can probably check the mailing list of the TLS uh, working group in um, the ETF one, and the that would probably mention it, but I'm... Uh, I'm not aware of one, um, so yeah. Although I think that Cloudflare might actually have enabled that for all free customers or something like that. I have this vague recollection that Google Chrome is doing Kyber already with a small percentage of clients and some um and some servers um so it's supported in chrome chrome um uh, we're rolling out to Chrome and to Google servers, both over TCP and Quick, and monitoring for compatibility. Uh, Third-party server operators such as Cloudflare, uh, both one and for all. So it looks like a bunch of Google and Cloudflare servers support it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, apparently every Cloudflare server with a footnote which probably says that's only that's not enterprise customers because oh only disabled for website in FIPS mode um, I'd be surprised if enterprises uh, are enabled but still um, looks like yeah every Cloudflare uh, server so Cloudflare.com is the answer and maybe google.com um, sometimes they don't turn on things on the flagship so sometimes it's not going to be on on google.com but it might be on on um, mail.google.com which usually gets the uh, profiles a little sooner i don't know if that's still true uh, it was true at some point if i remember correctly and all of this is from 
even behind uh, before my time at Google, not something I knew from uh, internally. Any other question? After which I'm going to say thank you for everybody uh, to everybody who followed and um, subscribe to get the notification for when we do part two, which is going to be. I'll probably go a little forward, just doing decaps what you're looking at um, by myself, which is boring enough. Uh, not decaps, sorry, the crib. Uh, and then we'll do together the Atwell and ML Chem um, and uh, finish generating the test vectors for for everything. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, oh, right, and the next time we'll also do the um, uh, performance optimization tricks. So we'll look at what's the slowest stuff and try to make it a little faster and uh, figure out if we should pass around a bunch of pointers instead of copying those values all over the place. And um, uh, and remove all the allocations, which probably means changing the Shatri package so that it allows uh, the virtualization sending a CL for that, uh, uh, getting it reviewed, and then switching to that so that we can get a zero location in caps and decaps. Cool. Well, folks, thank you. And see you next, next time, hopefully with a proper microphone and uh, Ethernet cable. Uh, hoping it's not actually just a CPU problem, which I'll do some testing for which would be kind of annoying. All right. Bye.